my fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video I thought I'd do something a little bit different and give you a tour of my art supply closet. So if you're interested in seeing what's in my closet right here, just keep on watching. I had previously had a poll on my Instagram account, um, which I'll have on the screen and linked below, and I asked my followers if they were interested in seeing how I store my art supplies and the vast majority of people said yes so we're going to do an art supply closet tour so this is my hallway it's my mirror that's the bathroom but this is my closet i think it's actually supposed to be a linen closet um, but i had commandeered it as soon as we moved in and called it my art supply closet so the vast majority of things in this door is going to be art supplies so let me get into it and let's take a look. So this is just looking up, panning down. So I would say about 80% of this closet is art supplies and the rest is kind of miscellaneous household stuff. Um, but let's take a tour from the top going down and I will leave links to anything I mention here down below in the description box if you're interested in purchasing them for yourself. So starting at the top shelf, um, I have a couple bubble mailers and boxes. Um, I have miscellaneous pens, pencils in this container. This is packing tape is always important to have. Um, this box has more tape. I have a toner for my printer and some board games. The second hanging shelf, so this is actually a, a slip-on wire shelf. It kind of blends in pretty nice with the existing shelves. So these wire shelves actually came with our apartment and I bought a hanging shelf here and one below um, but in this first hanging shelf I have my Prismacolor pencils and a bunch of stickers um, that I put on my artwork that I mail out um, so that it doesn't hopefully doesn't get damaged um, so quick tip if you are packing and shipping things um, if you can buy in bulk definitely buy in bulk you can see I have five rolls of these since I'm almost through with my first roll. On to the second shelf. Um, this is kind of a hodgepodge of things, so starting from the left. Um, I have a bunch of just knickknacks in these containers that I believe I bought from Home Depot. So these are small compartments that you can adjust and these have like bobby pins, contact lens cases, uh, this one has zip ties and charcoal. Uh, this is also, this holds a few boxes. Nail polish, because it fit in here. Rechargeable batteries, um, spare light bulbs, and you'll see a bunch of these boxes. So these are actually uh, called photo boxes. Um, I believe they're, they're the size that you can fit regular old-fashioned photo prints. Um, I'll have the dimensions on the screen here, but I basically buy a bunch of these when they're on sale. I buy all of mine from Michaels when they're about half off, so they're normally five to six dollars, and I buy them when they're about two dollars. So Michaels does have uh, sales periodically throughout the year, and whenever there's a really great sale, I usually pick up a few. So this is just one of the boxes and this whole area down below has more boxes. Um, so the nice thing about these is that you can cut your own label and write it so you can easily tell what's in the box if you have a couple boxes with the same color. Um, this bin just has a lot of random bags. So these are pretty nice. These are from a brand called Husky, which is a, I believe, like hardware related brand. Um, 
I bought this in a pack of three for I think ten dollars from Home Depot in different sizes and they're super durable. Um, this panel here is mesh so you can actually see through and know what's inside of your bag um, but these are super durable and really handy. So on the third row this left box here is uh, when I tried to do resin artwork um, that didn't quite work out but I do have a box just full of like resin molds and mold release and mixing cups and all that stuff. Um, this next box has basically a bunch of miscellaneous cables, um, a lot of extension cords, printer cables, internet cables, uh, but a uh, thing I want to point out is that these Velcro wraps are really, really good. Um, they come in a roll of, I believe, 50 or 100 for just a couple bucks. Um, so I bought a pack of 100 of these Velcro wraps, and then I use them basically on every bundle of cords, and that kind of keeps everything from getting too tangled up in there. I also have some USB cords charters and yep. So after that I have some rolls of stuff. This is just plastic wrap for wrapping um, my oil pa oil paint palette um, between uses. Um, I have a roll just for that and I have some tracing paper. So this is the part that actually holds most of my art supplies. And you can see that I have them labeled at the front, so they're really easy to read. Um, so let's see. This is my charcoal and pastel box. And again, I have one of these tiny um, compartment plastic organizers from a hardware store that stores... Um, when I was taking figure drawing classes, this was a great way to organize the charcoal and keep it from... keep the charcoal from actually breaking in my bag. Then I have a couple more boxes of charcoal that I got on super clearance. Uh, Coats is my favorite, but I also bought this brand. And I do have pan pastels. If you have ever wondered um, my opinions of pan pastels, uh, I, I don't really care for pan pastels right now, and the main reason is because they take up so much space. So this is just one color and you can see by my hand how big it is. So instead of using pan pastels, I just basically treat my soft pastel sticks like pan pastels. Um, because if I were to buy, say, 30 colors of pan pastels, it would literally take up my entire work area. So I do own a few, but I actually don't really use them. and. Um, my opinions might change in the future, but for now, uh, these basically just live in this box. So I have a brown, a blue, and a, like a sienna color. I also have more sponges back there. I'll put this all back. Okay, moving on to the fourth level. You can see um, my second hanging bin I have it has a shelf just for my label maker and this was probably one of the best purchases I've made in my life. Uh, I don't know that sounds weird but I do really really enjoy having my label maker. Um, I use it to label cables, label boxes, label miscellaneous things. Um, and this is a pretty pretty good model. The keyboard is fairly large, so it's easy to type. And I've had this for about three years, and it's still going pretty strong. And they still sell the, um, you can see the tape in there. So if you don't have one, I would definitely recommend investing in a label maker. There are hundreds of ways you can use this guy. So since he's so special, he lives on his own shelf because otherwise I would probably lose it. Um, back in the corner there I started a few woodworking projects that I never finished so there's 
I don't know, polyurethane stain, wood stain, grout, sandpaper, all that, all that stuff. Um, this bin just has miscellaneous things. Another photo box that has where I keep my extra um, thank you notes. So whenever I make a, whenever I do a commission for someone, I will write a thank you note and include it in the package that I send off. So these just have a, a lot of excess stationery in them. Uh, that's an extra tablecloth I had from my vendor event, and more, I think these are oil, oil sticks. Um, you can see I'm, I haven't made a label maker label, but for now this has some painter's tape that labels it. So this just has binder clips, tape, random office stuff. Uh, Let's see, back here I have light bulbs and acrylic paint. So what's nice about having these boxes is, you know, if you've ever dealt with paint or oil paint especially, if the tubes leak, and they, they usually do leak eventually, um, instead of having the oil drip down and gunk up everything, um, I actually line the inside of the oil paint boxes with plastic so if it does leak it's all contained inside the box so it's not gonna you know drip down and drip over everything else okay and the last drawer is just random stuff so I have bungees um, toiletries more toiletries toothbrushes <laughs> a bunch of random stuff down here and at the very bottom, I have these neat little containers I bought for the vendor show that are now empty, so I'm just using them to store random stuff. And that, that box just has a bunch of my business cards in it. Um, this is also something I bought from Home Depot. Not sponsored by Home Depot, but hey Home Depot if you're watching. Um, so this is came in a set of two and it's same thing like the uh, bins I had up there where they're just like small compartments. Um, but this one actually has a bunch of ra more random stuff like glue sticks, um, wire, velcro, uh, a kneaded eraser, glue sticks, embroidery scissors, a bunch of random stuff. So it's a great way to store small things without getting them uh, you know, lost at the bottom of boxes as you can open it up and you can see everything. Let's zoom back out. And so this thing right here in the corner is actually a speaker stand. And I bought this in a set of two from Monoprice. And so this is actually how I set up my lights. So this is actually like kind of like a tripod when you pull the legs out. And this upper part is where I clamp my work lights that I bought also from Home Depot. Um, so I'll, I can do a video if you'd like to see how I how I made this setup, but basically when I film um, top-down shots in videos, I have this stand and the stand I'm actually using right now for my lights. So I'll attach a total of four work lights and each light produces about 100 watts of light. And that's how I illuminate my work area because um, I don't have the best lighting inside of my apartment, so I'll need to use a lot of extra lighting in order to get um, a clear shot. So this is just one of them. If I can, let me see. I'm gonna turn off the other one that I'm using right now to film. So this is the light stand I use when I'm actually working. Um, so I have two work lights and they clamp on 
to basically a shelf liner and these are just clamps that can be re adjusted up or down and I have my daylight bulbs um, plugged in so they emit a lot of light but they also get a little hot so um, since I was just using it these bulbs are a little hot right now so this is an adjustable work light and I'll link this one down below as well so if you want to make your own light stand um, I can make another video on how I bought and where I bought all of these uh, things so that is my work work light and the white stuff is just tape don't worry about it so this is my closet yeah nothing fancy I would say all of these white bins here here are from Sterilite and they're pretty good they, they also stack on each other if you want to do that these wire shelves I believe I bought from Ross for about five dollars these smaller plastic bins are all from Daiso which is a dollar store in, and there's a bunch of them in California where I live again these plastic bins and that bin are from Home Depot. Let's see what else. These art art bins I bought from Blick. And I used them when I basically went to art classes at my community college. They're really handy because they have the handles and this latch closure. So it's really secure and easy to carry a lot of stuff. Um, the boxes are all from Michaels and I'll have a link to those and I believe the blue bins are also from Home Depot um, so I'll also link those so thank you very much for watching um, I hope this gives you a few ideas if you're thinking about storing your art supplies a little more efficiently and I got most of my stuff on sale so it was also pretty budget friendly if you want to reorganize your space so thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.